I have the power. The Nintendo power. Hey guys, I'm back. And we're going to continue reading on a couple more issues of Nintendo Power. We're still in the NES era, and we probably still will be for a few more sessions of this. But um, uh, we're currently on issue number 16. Uh, Mario 3 has come out at this point, um, kind of showcasing a lot of the late um, NES library now. Uh, we'll probably start seeing some stuff about the Super Nintendo uh, to come in the future. So, <clears throat> you know, pretty exciting era to be a gamer at this point. And this was in 1990, I believe. Uh, I think we're in September, October 1990. So we're like a year away from the Super NES. I think at this point, like, I was, like, still learning how to, like, walk and talk and everything, so... I was still very young. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, keep things going. This is issue 16. Like I said, September, October 1990. Let's see what was going on in uh, Nintendo Land at this point. Looks like the cover is uh, Maniac Mansion. We also got some Mission Impossible. Some Kickle Cubicle. Um, TMNT, the arcade game, Solar Jetman, a special Game Boy feature. We got this guy who's like carrying his Nintendo Power like a... I don't know why the first thing that came to my mind was a like Go-Gurt, but... He just like rolled it up. Oh, more Final Fantasy too, as well. <coughs> <coughs> And yeah, for those who uh, are watching this part after the last part I did of this, um, I did get sick, so that's why my voice probably sounds a little rough right now. But I'm recovering, so should be better by the next time I do this. Yo, want to want to read about Nintendo moms? You've printed tons of letters from kids and a few from dads. How about an equal time for us moms? The NES is great. My favorite game is Tetris. I enjoy consistently beating my kids and husband at it. The only person I know who is better than I am is another mom. Maybe it's those years of experience creating um, order from chaos in our children's closets. I am convinced that the NES is a learning tool. The adventures in RPGs gives kids an incentive to read. Lots of the words are hard, and some in archaic language, but my 10-year-old eats them up. My 8-year-old daughter's reading and directional perception have improved radically since she started playing Tetris and Super Mario Bros. I have Mario to thank for teaching my 4- and 6-year-olds how to take turns cheerfully. What other activity improves from fine motor coordination, teaches map-making, logic, and problem-solving, and is fun at the same time? At our house, playing Nintendo is a privilege, not a right. Chores are done speedily with no complaints, and there are very few arguments, especially when we have a new game in the house. Thanks, Nintendo. I think you're wonderful. Yo. <coughs> That's very wholesome. Okay, future scientist. I am in the fourth grade at Barnett Elementary in Fairbanks, Alaska. This year, for my school's science project, I chose a science problem I would like to share with you. I wanted to find out if people who play Nintendo have better eye-hand coordination. I thought this would be interesting because a lot of children play the NES. I tested about 50 students in my school with my eye-hand coordination tester. The data from my experiment showed that students who play Nintendo more have better hand-eye coordination. I won a blue ribbon and a medal for my school district science fair. I was then asked to go to the state science fair in Anchorage, Alaska, where I won a blue ribbon for my grade. I learned a lot about scientific method. That is actually pretty cool. That would have been an experiment I would have loved to have done as a kid. I would have just been too lazy to do it. Mario's Question Corner. 
Why didn't Mario change his suspenders? Wait, answer, growing a tail in Mario Bros. 3 required a new set of pants. Suspenders included, okay. Question, I would like to know how Mario and Luigi became plumbers. A, work, hard work. Question, why is Mario's nose bigger than it used to be? A, an interesting question, either you get a larger television set or Mario's been telling fibs. <laughs> <coughs> that Pinocchio logic there, I guess. Yeah, I need to play Final Fantasy. The original. I just, I can't really connect with these sections because I haven't played the whole game. I've only played, like, the first few sections of it. <coughs> and that's right, I think they're going to do an, I think the next issue is going to be the Final Fantasy guide or something. Yeah, I know there's the Pixel Remaster, but I could also just play, like, you know, an emulated version of it pretty easily. Yo, Maniac Mansion. Like, what is... Like, Maniac Mansion kind of looks like it's almost like a... text-based or... You know, just a general adventure game. Like a point-and-click or something. If you watch G4 Icons, they said Final Fantasy was the last chance square. Yeah, I remember that. I, I actually remember seeing that episode. I love how the in the hallway three you got Fred's room, Edna's room, Ed's room, and Ted's room. So there's Ed's in every single name. That's kind of silly. Oh, it is a point-and-click DOS game. That's cool. Well, it's on the NES as well. You remember Cheats, sponsored by Pringles? Yeah. I mean, if, you're, if Pringles is going to sponsor anything. <laughs> okay. Top 30. There were some surprises on the top 30 this time around. Namely, the meteoric rise of Final Fantasy to the second slot and the strength of the pros picks. Part of the reason for this one-sided vote is that our professional game counselors get first crack at playing new Nintendo games. Usually a month or so before much of the rest of the country receives them. That's why some new games do so well out of the top 30 starting game. Okay, well that explains why Final Fantasy and Ninja Gaiden 2 got as high as they did. I love the, I love the summary for Final Fantasy. The pros are sold on this captivating adventure, even though they aren't eligible to win prizes in the Final Fantasy Treasure Quest. <clears throat> I guess I guess that sucks to be them. Calabunga, dude. The turtles are back in the top three and are here to kick some packs. They're as hot on the NES as they are everywhere else. 
Ryu's second adventure puts him against fierce new ninja opponents and monsters from the realm of chaos. Uh, the world of dreams continues to be hanging on pretty well in the waking world. A true classic Mega Man 2 draws him in with great action in a wonderfully weird world. It's the ultimate test of quick thinking, steel nerves, geometry, and thumb stamina for Tetris. Um, Hyrule is still a great place to visit adventure, action, deceit, and drama are all part of the game. <clears throat> Let's see. Batman, the character, has been around a long time. Your votes show the NES alter ego will be too. It's a mythical Zelda 2 type adventure in ancient Greece, and it's a real winner according to the pros. If only the pros were right. <laughs> <clears throat> Yo, know, roller games. Roller games. I guess it's like a skating game or something. That's that's pretty interesting. NES play action football. A skating game and a video game? Never seen much of those nowadays. <clears throat> and see, Tony Hawk actually had a pretty good thing going there for skateboards for a while. <clears throat> okay, snake, rattle, and roll. Wait. Wait. Solid Snake never needed this kind of equipment to complete his missions, but then he wasn't trying to scarf down nibbly plibbies, pibblies, nibbly pibblies, tongue extensions. Oh god! Pickle cubicle. Kickle cubicle looks kind of like a cute game. Kind of a cute little puzzle based game a little bit. Garden Land, Cake Land, Fruit Land, and Toy Land. Looks like Kirby. It does kind of have like a Kirby vibe to it. And there's a tree that looks like a boss or something. These are just like the bottom pages or something. Okay, there we go. Now we're on the Game Boy portion of this. Any of these games? Did I play any of these games? Doesn't look like it. Okay, there we go.
<clears throat> yeah, this was basically, hey, let's give, like, game... Because there's turtle games on the NES. Let's put them on the Game Boy, too. <clears throat> there's a lot of series that kind of, you know, use that mindset, obviously. There's Cosmo Tank. There's Qu Quarth. Bad Skater Die, Bad and Red. Bad and Red, the sequel to Red, Red Gravity. Yo, cat, cat trap. You gotta catch cats or something. Those poor cats. Oh, Snoopy's Magic Show. I've played this. I actually played that on Retro Achievements like a long time ago. I think I actually beat the whole game, too. It, it's new for Game Boy, man. The Rescue of Princess Blobette, Disney's DuckTales, R-Type, Bo Jackson's Baseball, Nobunaga's Ambition. In one of the most ambitious NES to Game Boy conversions yet, Koei will pack all the strategy, story, and gameplay of the NES historical simulation Nobunaga's Ambition into a Game Boy cartridge. That's pretty legit, because Nobunaga's Ambition is like really difficult. Oh, here's the Game Boy Top 10. Tetris being the first. Well, oh, Mario Land did not score very high. <clears throat> Yo, Little Nemo. I know Odin's played this game before. Yo, Dragon Warrior 2. I've played a bit of this. Never finished it, though. Solar Jetman. Now here's the second Turtles game. Yeah, didn't um Dragon Warrior 2 like have like isn't like the end game like really brutal? Like you have to like grind so hard for the ending. Cuz I remember that was a thing that um Illu Weaver told me that I would have to do. But again, I never actually did finish it. I think I got right before the grind. And I'm like, okay, I don't want to play more of this right now. And I just didn't finish it. Okay, Gauntlet 2. You love a good Gauntlet. Yo, Dick Tracy? They put him in. They put him in. Low G Man. <coughs> Swords and Serpents. 
Dad, I didn't say cowabunga in my life. Your script sucks. Who's Dick Tracy? I don't know. His name's Dick and his last name's Tracy. That's all you really need to know. Yo, Barker Bill's trick shooting? What, wait, trick shooting for what? I can't even tell what kind of game this is. <clears throat> I guess it's just someone who shoots stuff. Because apparently it's like Zapper inclusive. Remember Snake, Rattle, and Roll by... Literally, we th that was in this issue. That was literally a game talked about in this issue. I've never played it, though, so I couldn't really say much about it. Yeah, I'll go back in a minute. Hold on, let me go through the rest of this. Yo, Gilligan's Island. Didn't, didn't score very high. Gilligan got wrecked. Scored about the same as Bigfoot Monster Truck Racer. Circus Capers. It's a very early pseudo fake 3D game like Sonic 3. Okay, gotcha. That's what I kind of seemed like. I had seemed like I had that kind of perspective. Shingen the Ruler from Shingen Takeda. Oh yeah, that is who it's about actually. So this is just like Nobunaga's ambition, just with the Samurai Warriors characters. Starship Hector from the creators of Mario Party. We got Starship Hector. Let's see Nightmare on Elm Street, Rally Bike, Cabal. Definitely seem to be kind of the more bottom of the barrel games. Oh, there's Super Famicom. There's Mario World. <coughs> so we'll start seeing more about that soon. Oh, here they're talking about the cartoon for Mario 3. Kuki Von Koopa. Ooh, the Miracle Piano. Magician Battle Tanks. Ultima Quest of the Avatar. <coughs> Okay, next issue is the uh, the Final Fantasy guide. And then the one after that's going to be like Dr. Mario, Solar Jet Man, Little Nemo. Oh, the Player's Poll Contest. Yo, that third prize t-shirt. Hell yeah. Okay, let's go back to Snake, Rattle, and Roll really quick. That is pretty funny that that was like quite literally in this issue. Yep, literally. That was literally in this issue. Yeah, it does kind of look like Sonic 3D Blast style. Yeah, early rareware. <clears throat> okay, well this is probably going to be a very kind of... Issue 17 is another player's guide one. And it's for Final Fantasy, so... Probably not going to do too much with this, but got to get through all these issues somehow, you know. 
Okay, I, I like uh, I like Sonic 3D Blast. I don't think it's as good as any of the other like Sonic like 2D games, but I think it's fine. I don't think it's harmless. I'd play. I'd rather play that over Mean Bean Machine and Spinball. If I'm being honest. <clears throat> Man, yeah, I feel like whenever I've played this game, like, I think I've only done, like, stuff up to Chapter 2. I don't think I've done anything beyond that. So, it seems like there's still quite a bit of the game. Anything is better. Three <laughs> Man, you guys are just giant 3D Blast haters. That's all you are. 3D Blast is not that bad. Are you guys such haters? <clears throat> yeah, I, well, I don't like. I do not like spinball. I feel like spinball is like a harder sell for people because, yeah, you pretty much have to be not only like ping pinball, but also, I think, be good at pinball to like you know get it get some kind of enjoyment out of it and I'm just not crazy about pinball by itself <laughs> special item TNT It's kind of cool that they have like all the like stats and stuff for like all the enemies. I can zoom in a little more because I will cut off the top of it though. That's my only problem. Garland. I, Garland, will knock you all down. I've heard of Wizards and Warriors. I don't think I've ever played it, though. <clears throat> Yo, Castle of Elf. Elfland, Elfland, Elfland. Excuse me.
Yo, ass toast? His ass is toast. Anyone get that reference? <clears throat> Buttered toast. No, that's not the reference. Buttered toast is not the reference. You know, Astos and Captain N and, like, nothing at all like this game. Okay, gotcha. Pokemon Legends Arceus. Which I will be playing more tomorrow. I'm going to really be focusing hard on finishing and completing that Pokedex tomorrow, too. So stay tuned for that. This honestly is probably a pretty good guide for this game, though, because, again, it has, like, you know, maps that has, like, enemy bios and everything. I wish I had more to actually say about it because I haven't played it before myself yet. All the way, anyway. Anyway, to answer the the reference that I made earlier, it was from a Eight Bit Theater, which is like um, it was like an old sprite comic based on the Final Fantasy like sprites. It was a silly comic. Honestly, I know more about Final Fantasy 1 from 8-bit theater more than the actual game. Bright my shiny metal ass. Oh, Bender. Oh, that's... I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday. I think I did mention during my stream yesterday. I actually watched the Hulu episodes of Futurama, the new season. It was fun. It was mid at worst. It was alright at best. There were a few episodes that I thought were pretty solid continuations of, like, storylines from, like, just the series in general.
Ooh, class change. On the subject of Billy West, I do feel like Billy West's voice is like the only voice that seems kind of like not as good as it used to be. Now, not that it sounds bad, it just seemed like it just the quality of his like voice roles just kind of didn't seem as awesome as it used to be. You ever play Castle Quest? No, I've not. He is getting old. Yeah, I mean, that's true. People just get old, you know. I'm getting old. Now, you guys are getting younger. Like, all of you guys are getting younger. I'm the only one that's getting older. Okay, the quests end. We're almost through this random look at... YouTube channel turn 16 next week. Yeah, I feel... Yep. I've already turned 16 on my channel. <clears throat> Temple of Fiends revisited. The past becomes the present. That sounds pretty deep. Guessing Chaos is the final boss. <coughs> Here they actually show everything. Index. You love a good index. That's kind of cool that they have like each like different thing and like where you find it. That's kind of neat, actually. Okay, well that's it for that issue. Um, I guess we'll do one more, and then next time we'll actually do the last of the strategy guides. Which the last strategy guide is more like, not really a strategy guide, it's like information about playing the NES 
with four players. So this will be like, this will probably be a really short one, honestly. Honestly, I could even try to do this after I do this next issue, just to try to plow through it. So you're going to start fresh with like, just Nintendo issues from now on. Okay, so it looks like issue number 18, this is the November and December issue. Looks like it's going to be focused on Dr. Mario. It's got Castlevania 3, Solar Jetman, and Little Nemo. <clears throat> <clears throat> Yo, did anyone ever put Nintendo Powers on their Christmas tree? Like, just put, just decorate it with issues of Nintendo Power. That sounds like a great idea. Oh god, a sticky situation. I was playing Super Mario Bros. 3 and I had finally made it to King Koopa. I was thirsty, so before I took him on a took him on, I paused the game and got a Pepsi. I took a long drink and then set it down. A friend walked in just then to see how far along I was. My parakeet had climbed out of his cage to observe. Then my friend jumped onto the bed, startling the bird, which took off and crashed into my Pepsi, knocking it against the reset button. It reset my game, but worse yet, it spilled Pepsi all over me. Oh god, that sucks. <laughs> <clears throat> you can't wait for the November 1994 and November 2004 issues, I wonder why. <laughs> oh, these are worse Nintendo nightmares. Hold on. Okay, Drifliny. Uh, I was about to finish Karate Kid when the screen started getting fuzzy. Then the power went out. When I came back on, my game was gone. I was mad because I told my sister that she could play SMB when I was done. Good. God must be a... God must be a girl? That's how you end that letter with? Oh my god. Have I got a story for you. I bought two Game Boys for my sons for Christmas. A few weeks ago, I heard a scream from upstairs. Dave at 11 had flushed the toilet while he was holding four game packs, and three of them fell in. Two were flushed, and one was left floating. We retrieved it and dried it off, and it still played. The other two stopped up the toilet. The maintenance man in our apartments thought he could dissolve them with, with lye. So he poured it in and let it soak for 24 hours. It was still stopped up the next day. So he decided to take the plumbing apart to remove the obstruction. When we got the games out, they looked fine. The lie hadn't even hurt the labels on them. We rinsed them with clear water. I hated to do that. But after all, they'd been submerged for four days. We let them dry then tried them. They both played perfectly. I am impressed. The only problem I have with Game Boy is borrowing one from my sons. If you come out with any more puzzle games, I'll have to buy one for myself. My thanks for a quality product and hours and hours of quality entertainment. <clears throat> okay. When I finally beat Bowser in Super Mario Bros. 3, my brother and I wanted to take a picture, so we turned off all the lights. Unfortunately, the lights were all connected to the wall socket, and it turned off my darn game. Now, that just sounds like a skill issue right there. One day, my brother was playing Double Dragon 2 when my mom smelled a fire. Everyone had to evacuate. We left so fast that he forgot to pause his game. Smoke was coming from the laundry room, but it was just a lint fire. That's not, that wasn't as nightmarish as I thought it was. <coughs> Federation of Space Loonies. Solar Jetman. What kind of game is this? It looks like kind of like a platform explorer. Exploring type of game, I guess.
There's a lot of planets, though. Little Nemo, the Dream Master. Flower Garden, a pretty dangerous place. If there's no door, make one. Sounds like good logic for me, honestly. Mario stole ideas from Little Nemo. Well, that seems like a skill issue for Little Nemo, honestly. He should have defended his ideas a little more. Oh yeah, I remember that. See, I've actually seen Little Nemo, like the movie, like the cartoon movie. I remember there's that princess that like kisses him at the very end of the movie. Let's see, Mario Bros. 3. Where do are the warp whistles and how do I use them? Oh, looks like they show all of them. Where is the Psycho Shield? Now there's a question right there. Yo, Dr. Mario. I've played this game, and I've actually speed ran this game a little bit, too. I actually watched a Rick speedrun, do a few speedruns of this at AGDQ. I should get back into it at some point. I actually do enjoy Dr. Mario. Dr. Mario's Med School. Be careful not to eliminate all your viruses while practicing. I mean, you're getting rid of viruses. I, I imagine that'd still be a good thing to do, you know. When we get a full-fledged Bowser game, that's a question that I and Bowser Girl has had for a very long time. If you find triples easy, try a quadruple. Okay, for Game Boy, we got DuckTales, Dr. Mario, the Game Boy version, RoboCop, and Play Action Football. Remember when we heard DuckTales and Donkey Kong 64 randomizer earlier? <laughs> DK, Donkey Kong. <clears throat> I 
That was the funniest part of the scene, I think, when I heard that. Because I knew that was a song. Like, I put it in there, obviously. But, like, just kind of hearing it again, it's just like, oh, right, I forgot this was in here. Yo, RoboCop. Oh, also, when I was at HDQ, I did run into Feasel, and Feasel is the guy who uh, runs the speed gaming channels. And I was like, hey, Feasel, can't wait for Super 16. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's coming up soon, isn't it? <laughs> so, probably in like a two months or so, we might have the game list. It's usually like either March or... April when they reveal that. So we'll have to see what that ends up being like. Okay, Game Boy Top 10. Yo, Mario Land is on top now. Then we got Gargoyles Quest, which is, that's actually on the uh, NSO service. Then Batman, Tetris Golf, Dedalian Opus, which sounds, that's a weird name, Dedalian Opus, Castlevania, The Adventure, Nemesis, Alleyway, which I have that game, Alleyway. Alleyway is basically Breakout, pretty much. Amazing Penguin. That's a game I'd like to see. Amazing Penguin. Like what? What's? You know, there, there could be some like something amazing about that. Also, Ninja Boy. Of course, Doctor Mario is probably the highest scoring game of that. Mario Land. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. On here, they're talking about Castlevania 3. Oh, Mega Man 3. That's going to start being a relevant topic soon. Oh, shoot. I Okay, well. Thankfully, I didn't go too far. Castlevania 3 was um, one of the games shown at AGDQ. I actually did watch the run. I just don't really remember much about it. I remember the commentary being good. And the, the commentary being more interesting than the game itself. the Mario Brothers and Plumbins are game. The Lost Son of Dracula. Oh my god, Alucard is Dracula spelled backwards. Grrrr. Man, they actually go through quite a bit of this game.
Yeah, they really are showing a lot of this. Okay, top 30. A lot of old favorites have held on to their positions this time around, but some hot new titles such as TMNT2, Crystalis, and Mega Man 3 have appeared in the top 30. They promise to provide tough competition in the months ahead. Also, keep your eyes peeled for titles such as The Simpsons and Castlevania 3 in future top 30 rankings. <laughs> Okay, SMB3 is still on top, and judging by the point totals, it looks like it'll stay there for a while. It's the biggest hit since food and water. <laughs> <coughs> oh my god, the biggest hit since food and water. Well, that's a pretty high bar to match there. Oh my god. I need to print screen this and show this to Odin. Final Fantasy, the epic adventure of the Light Warriors is the runner-up for the second straight issue. We expect it'll be here for a while. Mega Man 2. Mega Man 2 took a giant leap for Robot Kind by jumping up from 6th place. You might also notice the sequel, Mega Man 3, sneaking up. 4. Tetris. Soviet cosmonauts played Tetris in their Mir space station, making it the only video game hit in orbit. 5. Ninja Gaiden 2. Ninja Gaiden 2 slipped a bit, but it's still one of the most exciting games around. Number 6. Ninja Gaiden. Fans are rediscovering Ryu's first adventure, and it seems as if they're loving it. 7. Mario Bros. 2. The second SMB game seems destined to remain in the top 10 forever. The reason is simple. It's fun. 8. Another veteran of the top 10, Link's second adventure in Hyrule remains in the 8th spot since last time. Number 9. Zelda is back in the top 10 after a brief vacation. Year after year, the game inspires new fans. Then 10. TMNT. They've slipped a bit since the last top 30, but it's never wise to underestimate the Turtles. They, 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 they called it, folks. They called it. Okay, hold on. Let me pull up my paint here. That's saved. <clears throat> Fire free Bowser. Snake, rattle and roll. Double dragon, solstice. Yeah, solstice, which is basically Equinox, the prequel. Now playing Street Fighter 2010. Destiny of an Emperor, which is, yeah, uh, Dynasty Warriors. Pipe Dream, Thunderbirds, a game where you dig stuff, I guess. Dead 
Destiny of an Emperor actually scored pretty decently, it looks like. Not as well as Mega Man 3, though. <clears throat> Yo, a Muppet Adventure? You know, four player extra strategy guide. Yeah, it's going to showcase a bunch of other games. You can play four player on your NES. Okay, Mega Man 3 is the next big game, it looks like. And The Simpsons, Bart versus the Space Mutants. Nintendo has fun in 1991. Oh, Earthbound, or Mother. Which, the, the first game never came out to American, right? Wasn't it just like the Super NES Mother that came out? Or just Earthbound? Yeah, your birth year. The year of slab. Well, yeah, I know I know that came out in 2015 because it was on the Wii U, but like Yeah, I'm talking about its original release. See, even they they even showed that game in here like in Nintendo Power America. So they they they, they considered bringing it over. Okay, the January issue is going to be Mega Man 3, it looks like. Uh, from what I understand, Mother was going to be released in the U.S., but for whatever reason, they canceled at the last minute. Eh, probably just again, more like perceptions about American gamers. Or something, I don't know. Okay, um, that's it for that issue. Next issue is the four-player guide, which is only 70 pages. Maybe I should just read this one really quick. That way we don't have to worry about any more strategy guide issues, and then we can just start fresh next time, not only with, like, issue 20, but also 1991. So that could be fun. We'll do that. We'll do that. So yeah, we'll look at this really quick. This is just, again, just a four-player smorgasbord of content. The five four-player gaming ground rules for fun. One, make sure everyone is comfortable and has an unobstructed view of the screen. Your four-player gaming sessions are likely to be four times as long as regular gaming marathons. Two, if you're playing a game with teams, strategize plays with your teammate before the game begins. If all four of you are working together, talk over teamwork. Three, even the communicating with your teammate or partners during play... Or wait... Continue communicating with your teammates or partners during play. Even the best laid plans may be failed, foiled, so don't get frustrated with your teammate. Four, rotate team members every so often, especially if one team is dominating the other. Five, make sure everyone understands the rules before you start a game. Play a few practice games before you start one that counts. So you got 
NES play action football. And fun fact, this is actually the earliest issue of Nintendo Power I own. I actually do own this issue, and that's the earliest one I own. I basically had every issue, 19 onward. I didn't start getting Nintendo Power until, like, issue 50 or something, but still, like, I got a bunch of guides, like, after the fact on eBay. Okay. Man, they give a lot of, like, thorough guides about, like, teams, it looks like. God, are all the teams in here? They have a lot of them. Okay, they don't have all of them. They have a good number of them, though, seriously. Oh, really? That's the oldest. That's interesting. So I beat you by one, Slav, somehow. I can see Gauntlet being a fun experience to do, like, with four players. That kind of, like, beat em up style type of game. Invisible Walls? What foul magic is this? Exits abound, but which, if any, hides the truth. Then you slay the mighty dragon. gets the task. What will you find in the mysterious secret room? Ooh. I love how like a lot of these like sports sections are just like, oh, here's a, here's a page summary for each of the teams. swords and serpents Got super spike volleyball.
<laughs> Chicks galore, yeah. And you got off-road. <clears throat> Nothing like a good old racing game. And I thought there was like a Bomberman game on NES, but I mean there was, but like I don't know if it was. I thought I thought I remember seeing like a like a four player like Bomberman in this issue though, but maybe not. Could be imagining it. I mean that would be a game to highlight though for sure. Then we got Spot, which I actually had the Game Boy Spot. Wouldn't know what to say about, like, doing it four-player, though. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. Well. Next time, guys. Issue 20, 1991, and Mega Man 3. That should be fun. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, sign off here. Let me see if anyone is streaming. Anyone I feel like rating. Oh, there's a couple of people who are streaming. Oh, PTM's doing Zelda 1 rando. You know what? Let's go check out PTM, actually. Okay, well, I'm going to head out, guys. Um, I will be streaming tomorrow. I'll be uh, doing some more Pokemon Legends Arceus. Uh, so come by if you want to check that out. I'm going to raid my good buddy PTM, Power to Mario. And, um, yeah, that's going to be it. So thank you guys for coming out. It's been fun, and I will see you guys next time. Later, folks.